Welcome to this US Master video tutorial. In this video, we want to show you how to use stereo measurement functionality in US Master. And therefore, what you need is to have a valid exterior orientation of your photos. So the georeferencing needs to be completed. And when you have done this, then you can find in US Master in the surface and auto generation the stereo functionality available. What we need is to have a terrain model. So either you already have for your project somewhere a LAS file, and then you can import the LAS data into this project, or you um, generate here quickly a surface. What I will do here is I will run here on feature-based matching on low for this project and create here quickly a terrain model for my project. So after the surface is generated, we, as mentioned, select here the result, just drag, and then we say start point cloud editing, and we load this into the editor. And now we can here start also to do our stereo measurement. US Master supports quad buffered stereo also. If you have a graphic card and a monitor that supports, uh, in this case, quad buffered stereo, either an active system or passive system, then you can also use US Master in this. This is a more superior a quality in stereo measurement uh, in the full resolution and therefore here also allowing us working also for a long time over several hours uh, to do stereo compilation. What we need to run stereo is of course from our photos. So on the photo tab we need first to activate all these images. If they are not activated, so if I select here let's say image 8 and then uh, image 9 by keeping control pressed, then we can open here a stereo view. Uh, when I open this, we don't see the stereo image here. And when we go to the output log, we see here that um, that we need to activate in this case here our images uh, for the anaglyph. So what you need is here activating them here. And then these photos are available for display. So we can here just select all the photos if we want, or only the ones that we need for measurement, activate them all, and then from there on we can always here select a pair um, in our case. The selection order is also important. If I first select image 9 and then hit control and select image 8, then my image pair here is looking north down. And if I first select image 8 and then I select image 9, then my stereo is north orientated here for this part. So the manual selection here is uh, selecting the left first and then the right on the second and then we hit here the view in stereo. Additionally to the manual selection, there is also a best fit stereo option. That means I can here in the view, there's a best fit stereo. You can also use control and B, or you can also use here the icon. When I select the function itself, I, it's a single click. So I click here, let's say here, um, I will just here remove. If I select here, then there are only two images uh, possible. So it should hopefully open image one and two correctly. And it also navigates us here already at the clicked position. So I was clicking it here in the upper left corner and my stereo image already opened in the upper left corner with these two images selected. Well, if I have only two images, then it's clear, but let's click here a little bit more into the center. So here where my fourth image comes into the game. So I click this one here and now it opens image one and image three and not two and three or three and four. And the reason is the tool options. So in the tool options at the moment, we are here in this case, 
saying that we want a minimum of 60% overlap and then we want to only use images from the same strip and we want to have them north aligned. So therefore, this is the criteria for us here to open up this stereo image. And we can here, in this case here, also um, influence it. We can say, I want to have a best intersection angle of 30 degrees. Um, and then when we go here and select an image pair, then it will take this into consideration. But I, if I say my best intersection angle is only, uh, let's say, 10 degrees, then uh, if I click here, then it's selecting image two and three. Uh, it's a more narrow angle. I have more overlap. That means I see more in my stereo image. So compared this one here in comparison to, let's just switch this one off, click one more time to one and three. Then we see here the overlap area covered is of course better with only the 10 degree um, intersection angle, but of course the height accuracy, so the base height ratio will be worse in this stereo pair. Similar is also the overlap itself. So I can also say I want only to open images that overlap at least 80%. And then when we now select here this pair, then again, image one and two is opened or two and three because they have here a larger amount of overlap to be used. And therefore image pair one and three is not here um, uh, considered because it's not covering the overlap area. So these are values that allows us to um, here uh, force what stereo model we want to get. In general, it's very common to work inside a strip mainly because these two images have a similar rotation. Um, they are flown in front, in just with a few seconds difference. So even if there are moving objects on the ground, then they didn't move further in a couple seconds. And therefore, and also north aligned makes sense. So you always have the same impression when you measure your data in the stereo measure mo measurement mode. The next thing is after we opened a stereo model, then we can also consider how to continue our measurement work when we come to the end of our stereo model. So in my case here, if I start here to digitize data, then we see here this white line and this white line is the, um, the bounding line of our stereo model where we would then move to the next stereo image if we set the parameters correctly and they are set in the options preferences in the views stereo part. So first of all, we want to activate the automatic load of the next stereo pair. Then we say at 90% edge. So this is the white line that we have here. So if we increase this value, then this white line moves further and further to the edge of the really physical. Uh, end of our stereo model and then we have a few parameters that we um, trigger and one is the maximum rotation of next pair. So we want to have the next stereo pair also having a similar base direction. Yeah? So in my case here, uh, if I take a look here at these two images, so from the red image somewhere my projection center is somewhere here. And here from the green image, the projection center is somewhere here. If I combine these two projection centers, then this is our base. And this base direction, uh, when we go to the next stereo model, we want to have a similar stereo pair, uh, which has a maximum difference in the rotation of 10 degrees to this base direction. So uh, let's here do it practically. So if I here go and I move my cursor to the right side, then now I'm hitting the edge and now I open the next stereo model with a similar base direction. And then again, we continue, we come to the next one, we come to the next stereo model, we come to the next stereo model, and all of them are always north orientated and having a similar base direction. So therefore we can navigate through uh, these um, images 
always having a similar impression of how our data, or where our data is looking at. And this is also taking care for our line measurement. So in the terrain tab, I right click here, break lines. I set this layer to active. So when I start now to uh, choose in the uh, create point line function and I start to digitize a line, I will generate a red line here and then based on my height, it will be placed. And I just want to showcase here. So here I start digitizing my line. And now when I move to the left side, I hit this border of my stereo model and then it will, in this case here, automatically load the next stereo model. I can continue. Then again, I hit the edge here and then I can continue my measurement. Again, I hit here the edge and I can continue. And then I double click and then my line is placed over multiple stereo images. Um, uh, here I was able to collect this vector line. And of course I can also change the height in between. So I can, let's go backwards and I change the height. I go a little bit higher. I continue my process measuring here. I go again down a little bit here, go to the next stereo image back and then here double clicking it. And when we take now a look here at these two vector lines in the one I uh, did not, uh, sorry here, profile view. So in the one I did not change the height, I just left it on the stereo height that I measured. And in the second one, I changed one type up and then I went down again from the height measuring this data, which means our collection of the data, let's go here to create point line, uh, again to the tool options is here uh, using the height from the stereo. There's also an option where we can say, I want to measure stereo, so real X, Y, Z coordinates, but I want to uh, do this based on the terrain model that exists. So I can interpolate it from our terrain model, which means if I go now again into stereo mode and I let's measure the same line here again, um, stereo measurement, interpolation method, I will just measure it a little bit to the left side here. And I just continue here parallel to this line. Then we will see that the heights that we derive here um, are now not anymore. They, I never changed the height, but because we use the interpolation, then this line here was following here the terrain um, of um, our data set that we here collected. The next part is in this case here, so here, sorry, Not here to zoom in. Um, is now the matching algorithm. So I can also here uh, go into um, measure create point line and I say match images and now not the point cloud is the important part, but it's the, um, the, uh, the, an image matching on the image itself. Oh, and the, the line why this one here is so floating is because my red line itself, the other one, uh, is used for interpolation. So my break line itself is influencing my data. So let me switch this one off so it itself will not make a part. Let me go back to the uh, interpolate uh, part. So now interpolation is not using the red lines. And if I now again measure almost the same line here, let me here just to here be sure that I'm here correct. Then uh, now the red line is not influencing anymore my line. And now this other line, exactly, yeah, is now perfectly fitting here on the ground. So therefore <laughs> this line that I measured before the other break line here, this one on top, was influencing the height. And then the last one here is now, as I mentioned, matching. So in the matching, uh, we will now not use the point cloud itself anymore as a reference, but it will be a stereo matching 
So again, uh, going here and I will now measure this second line here. And I just try here to show my vertices and let's place them similar to the other vertices. And then it will always run an image matching on each of these positions. And well, typically it should now be similar like the other one because the terrain model that we extracted um, was here, um, let me here just uh, go to the, uh, to the context menu and just say end. And when we now take a look, then this line here should be similar here on the ground. Yeah? So we see it here, it's very similar, like the terrain model itself on the ground. Okay, so in general, you can here take the stereo editor and uh, use this undock button and then make this on your second screen. Um, in our case here, we are using Anaglyph. So you can use this red-green glasses or red-blue glasses to see stereo. They are not as good as the quad buffered stereo, but um, they are still valid to generate high accurate XYZ coordinates and then you can also bring this uh, back into the tabs when you say again dock in this case part. Uh, after you collected your vector data you can go to file and then export from editor vector data then choose the default separate one and now here in the separate one uh, switch off the point cloud except you want to export also the point cloud then say here edit and then define the format. Let's do this as a DXF. And then you define also your output file. I will just leave it here by default. Then I say next and here now you can choose what data you want to export. I was measuring everything here into the break lines. So I just will use the break lines and then export them. I don't go now into the layer template here. You could now already define an external name, how the layer of the DXF will be different named as break lines. You could call it streets or whatever you want, but I just leave it here as break lines. Um, I also will not cut the data. You can limit the output, um, but I will just leave it as it is. And then I say next, and then I can here commit the output. And then this vector data, this DXF vector data is then written to your file and this is now valid um, uh, XYZ uh, line work that I was extracting. You can measure everything here in this uh, morphological tab. Um, so you can measure lines, you can measure points, which are then in this case our ground points and um, everything else is then just a different a display option so you can have here form lines uh, you can also change for yourself the color if the red color is not helpful you can then place this into the yellow color or whatever color you want to display here um, that's uh, here possible i hope this helps to understand how you can uh, access the stereo part one thing also to be aware is when you have the function of the best fit stereo uh, every time you click now here a new stereo window will come so you will see here in the tabs clicking once clicking twice clicking third time so you get every time a new stereo uh, window um, therefore just close them in this case again if uh, by accident you opened a second one or third one and um, then also what you can use is uh, when you have a keyboard with a context menu button, which is typically on the right side of your um, Alt button on your keyboard. Uh, when, I, when I hit this, then you can get here to an image adjustment and um, you can, most people are using a gamma correction, so you can make your, uh, your image here brighter or darker. Gamma will take care that there's no cutoff in your histogram. So I would prefer the gamma correction in comparison to uh, brightness. Yeah? So brightness here 
really can make images completely white or completely black. And gamma is now here a little bit more sensitive in the histogram. Contrast, of course, also you can hear if you want to see more features, uh, then this helps also to get this. The image adjustment here is not related to the photos, but it's related to the tab. It means if I, let's make here the gamma correction very dark, and then I use here image 22 and 20, let's just remember, 22 and 20, and if I now open a second image with 22 and 20, and I open this one here, then this second one here is not as dark as this one here, mainly because the image adjustment is only to the view and not to the images. Yeah, so therefore, um, just be aware of this. Final remark, uh, I already mentioned it, height accuracy. So in general, um, the base height ratio has a strong impact about your height quality that you can measure. And therefore, um, if you have an 80% overlap, then typically in photogrammetry, the people are not using uh, the two neighboring images, but they are using one in between. They, they leave one in between out. So if I have image pair one, two, um, then normally you would take not one, two, you would take one, three to measure in this case here, the left side and two, uh, four to measure then the second part of the image pair overlap for this part, uh, mainly because you have a better height perception. You can measure the height more accurate if this is important for your data that you collect. And um, you need, of course, also in this case here, um, the stereo glasses to measure, of course. Yeah, so I cannot measure here without glasses stereo correctly. Final remark, topics not mentioned in this video are snapping, 3D snapping, 2D snapping, which is really cool, it's possible. We have here these functions, but then the video would get too long. Also, another topic is here this uh, option to go uh, walk around, which is really cool also when you have oblique images in your project a little bit. So you can then walk around the building and measure stereo, always seeing the ground content around it. And also not covering in our part now here is setting up the stereo system with a quad buffered system. But you can look that uh, up in the installation. So when you go to the reference manuals in the installation, there are here remarks about how to set up a quad buffered stereo system with a US master. Of course, also not covered in this video are all the functions. Uh, I mean, parallel line measurement. Um, also here, there's a stereo point cloud extraction for the current stereo model also available. So there are, of course, lots of functionalities additionally to the uh, core stereo measurement uh, functionality. But I hope this is helping you at least, at least getting started into me uh, measuring and also, I didn't go into the preferences here about restrictions, but this is again similar like in the stereo setup, but just now um, basing for what stereo model is selected when I move out of the current stereo model. So if I move to the next model, um, do we restrict ourselves again to just stay in the same strip, to use the same camera, um, having a similar intersection angle, um, so this is all things that can be here additionally also triggered and um, restrict, but help also us perhaps to get similar stereo models and therefore having a similar height accuracy when you measure, having a similar viewing perspective for it. Um, and therefore this is also something that can be uh, taken into account. So I hope you enjoyed this very long video for stereo measurement and are now able to extract stereo data in US Master and wish you a nice day. Goodbye.